Hello, we're back again. In this second part of hypothesis testing using rejection zones, we'll introduce the concept of hypothesis testing on a sample mean. When Marinopolis College made the decision to move from the Atwater Pavilion to the Mother House on Westmount Avenue, one of the main concerns was the impact it would have on the student's average time of travel, which was 45 minutes at the other pavilion. If a study could conclude that the average time of travel to the mother house had become less than 45 minutes, this would be great for publicity. However, if there had been additional travel time on average to get to the current Marinopolis Pavilion, then the community would have had to negotiate with the STM to improve the service to the college. In either case, a change from the current average time would require some measures be put in place. Use a, a hypothesis test at a level alpha 5% to determine if the college will need to address the situation. This hypothesis test has as its parameter of interest the populational average mu, and the null hypothesis is that mu is 45. It will be confronted with the alternative hypothesis, where mu is unequal to 45, which is its opposite statement. In order to conclude that H0 can be rejected, a sample result must be sufficiently far from mu equals 45, either left or right, to be convincing. But what does sufficiently far mean? Again, we can visualize a situation to help us make sense of what the hypothesis must do to reject H0. We are currently assuming that mu equals 45 is an accurate statement. If sample results provide numbers that are close to 45, one could assume this was the result of chance or poor sampling and would be considered insufficient evidence. However, Extreme changes in the average, as shown by sample results, could be evidence that mu is actually no longer 45. The borders starting from which the rejection zones begin are called the critical sample means. There's one for the left rejection zone and one for the right rejection zone in this case. So. This time, as we confront mu equals 45, with mu unequal to 45, we are looking at a two-sided test, where two possible results could lead to the rejection of H0. Since our significance level is 5%, we will consider as extreme sample means that fall into the region that consists of the extreme 2.5% at the left, or the 2.5% sample means to the right of a population whose average is still, theoretically, 45. From the previous chapter, you can remember that to find the borders that will retain the 95 most plausible sample means, we would have to exclude the 2.5 at both extremities, which means adding or subtracting z 2.5% of the sample mean uh, standard deviation, so sigma x bar. Sigma x bar, for sample means, is computed as sigma over root of n. And here's where we are confronted with a problem, because sigma is not known. In fact, we're not even sure mu equals 45 is accurate although we are assuming it is until proven otherwise. And therefore, the best thing we can do, or the closest thing to exact we can do, is to replace sigma by s. However, even s is likely to be erroneous, and therefore we will switch the type of probability distribution from a z distribution to what is called a student t distribution. Tn minus 1, 2.5%, 2 
we'll take into account the likelihood that S itself has some errors of estimation in it. So the size of the sample has an effect on the precision of S and hence on the risk of a type 1 error. So now suppose that the survey results reveal a, a sample mean of 50 from a sample size of 81 and a standard deviation of S within the sample. With Excel, you can find that Tn minus 1, 2.5%, is 1.99. You can find this in Excel from La Loi Student Inverse by indicating you would like to cut off the 2.5% at the extremes. In English versions that of Excel, you will find Tinv as the function with which you can find the value of T to exclude the 2.5% at the extremities. If we multiply this value of t with s over root of n, we'll get 3.32. And so the left critical sample mean is 3.32 units left of 45, which is 41.68, and the right critical number is 48.3. In other words, 41.68 and 48.3 delimit the beginning of each rejection zone. Our sample result, our sample mean, was 50, which is to the right of the uh, border delimited by X bar C2. We are in the right rejection zone. So in other words, statistical evidence suggests that we can reject H0, in this case, at an alpha level 5%. And we can conclude that H1 is in fact true. That is, that the true mean is no longer 45 minutes. Hence, there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the average time of travel will no longer be 45 minutes. Our data suggests that it will in fact be more than 45. Negotiations with the STM should be put in place to improve transit to the college. The status quo cannot be maintained. Although we have rejected H0 in our previous example, this, this decision was based on a sample data on sample data that was potentially not representative or extreme compared to the true population mean. There is still a probability that our decision leads to a type 1 error, but this probability is less than 5%.